Going on YouTube, Cloverbuzz here, back with another Scarlet Violet video, and today we're going to be doing more of a complete regulation F tier list, which means we're not only going to be ranking the DLC mods like we did in our other tier list video, but now we have additional Pokemon, you know, that are just not in the DLC, but just in the game in general, that are allowed to be used in regulation F. So, it's more of a complete list, like I said, but the main difference now is I decided to change up the tier list a little bit. You know, normally, I would have a D tier on this tier list, right? And the D tier stands for don't use because these are just not good Pokemon to be able to use uh, in VGC. Now, that being said, because we have a lot more Pokemon um, to be able to, you know, discuss, I felt like it would just eat video time. I don't need to talk about D tier Pokemon anymore, okay? I think now we're at the point where like, we just want to focus on anywhere from the S tier up until the niche tier, okay? Because those are the Pokemon that we're going to be using in the competitive format. We're not going to be using D tier Pokemon. So if you don't see... Your Pokemon here on the list, um, then that means either not necessarily that it's bad, but at the very least, it hasn't proven itself worthy uh, of being great or at least decent in VGC as of this moment today. Now, that doesn't mean it can't get there, right? In due time, because this tier list is very, very early, right? It's January, but as of right now, January 3rd, this is where I think. Um, are the Pokemon that we need to be worrying about or, you know, even consider using in our team building, okay? So, in, in that sense, we still have the S tier, which is the best of the best, okay? You know, these are your strong meta-defining Pokemon, without a doubt. Um, always going to see them on plenty of teams, all right? The A tier, more or less the same idea. These are your strong and consistent options, but I decided this time around to break up the A tier, right? I wanted to go A-, minus, which is still, like, very, very good, you know, still, like, um, very popular within the meta, but maybe just uh, a little bit of a, a hindering stat or maybe not great of an ability um, or just not as good as the S or A tier Pokemon in general, right? Then after that, we still have the B tier. Now, this is what I call the solid option, right? It's still good. You can win tournaments with these, but they need a little bit of support, okay? And then finally, we have the niche tier. Now, again, niche doesn't mean bad. It just means these Pokemon, they are only very, very specific to particular teams where they have one job to do and one job only. And then outside of that job, they're not that good. Okay. So, you know, for example, like Tyranitar or even like Excadrill, I already put them, um, where's Excadrill? I already put this in the niche tier, right? Because it's really only good on those sand teams because outside of sand, who else is using Excadrill, right? So that's an example of what I mean. All right. And then, of course, the D tier option, which we don't even have on our list anymore. All right. So that's how I decided to break down the, the tiers this time around. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and start ranking some of these mods. All right. So let's start things off with Alolan Ninetales. So I think screens are still relatively playable within the format. Like I'll even rank Grimstone as well. I think Ninetales is still a very solid option to build around. You know, Aurora Veil is really good. And then again, you gain control of weather, uh, which is important against some of these sun Protosynthesis teams or these rain dance teams with Arcaludon and you know Urshifu, uh, you know that kind of thing. So I think you know just being able to change weather is gonna is always gonna have a good option, you know, within the format. And you're a fairy type, so you're gonna put some pressure against some of these other dragons running around now. So I think Alolan Nine Toes is still okay, but again, I still think it's within that option where you're gonna need some support to be able to safely set up those screens because other than that, they're just gonna change weather on you. You know they can pressure you you know with steel moves or rock moves in general but overall you know because of the defense boost uh from snow i think it's still a very very consistent option um but still needs a little bit of support that being said i think grimmsnarl can also fill fill that role for nine tails but again still like relatively niche you know if you're going to use a fairy type you're going to have to pressure me you know to convince me to use something else besides flutter main right you have to have a reason but still i think prankster screens are very very good you don't, you're not entirely reliant on weather. You you even have Parting Shot. You even have Fake Out. You got Thunder Wave. Grim Snarl is still a pretty good Pokemon. But again, relatively niche to how you want to play it. I think it's best on some of those defensive balance slower teams. Um, you know, that can really utilize Grim Snarl. But other than that, I think it's still in the niche tier. All right. Pursuing Arcanine. I know it's fallen off a little bit because Incineroar is back. But it's still very, very good. If you want to play, you know, even a little bit more offensive of a Tailwind team, I still think Hisui and Arcanine can still get the job done. Stab Rock Slide is very, very good. Um, that being said, you know, I still think Incineroar is just the king right now. So, you know, I still think, you know what? Let me put it back in the DB tier. I think it's still like a good option. 
Um, I just don't think I would put that, you know, within the A tier anymore. Isui and Lilligan, um, again, with Torkoal teams, I think it's still, like, pretty good um, within that, the idea. You know, again, Protosynthesis Sun, they're really utilizing it, right? So, you know, here's the key Protosynthesis card. You have um, Torkoal, you have Lilligan, of course, um, and then from here, you have stuff like Fluttermane and Raging Bull. All right, this is your core in terms of, like, trying to utilize this, okay? And then you could even consider something like... Um, Where's that thing called? Walking Wing. All right, this is another idea that you can use. You can even use this as like double dragon ideas. So Lilligan is always gonna be on these teams. Uh, again, after your eruption's broken, Sleep Powder is busted. So I think it's gonna have a decent role this time around. And I see it a lot uh, on some of those Protosynthesis on teams. So I think it's still a pretty good option. Urshifu Surging Strikes, man. Shh. I mean, without a doubt, no reason why you can't put this in the S tier. Um, again, Rain Dance, Rain Teams are, are broken right now. Tornadus, Urshifu, just gonna click Surging Strikes in the rain, pick up those KOs. Um, nowadays, you might use Choice Scarf, you might use Mystic Water, either way. Um, you know, you're putting on a ton of pressure in the early game. You're putting on a ton of pressure in the end game. Um, this is why people are starting to run a little bit more Water Pond. Um, water Pond mean like Ogre Pond Wellspring, you know, in that sense. This is why also Amoongus is still pretty good. So you can redirect all those surging strikes, but um, it is without a doubt in the S tier, in my opinion. All right, it does get checked a little bit more now with the Raging Bolt, but that's still not stopping it from dominating the meta. Bronzong is always going to be a good Pokemon, okay? I stand by that. I still say, you know, within that A- minus tier, um, you're a Steel type of Levitate. So that means Landris, Incarnate, Sludge Bomb, not going to hit you. Earth Power, also not going to hit you. So for that reason, I, I automatically put in the 8 minus tier. Then you add the fact that you get Trick Room, you get Iron Defense Body Press, um, you have Leftovers Recovery, you're a bulky Pokemon in general. Um, I think that's more than enough reason to give it uh, within the A minus tier. Basky Legion, again, you could use it on some of those rain teams, right? It's a rain sweeper, but other than that, relatively niche. Hydrapple. Um... This one's a tough one. I still think it's niche. It's good on those Trick Room teams. You're slower than, you know, King Gambit, Iron Hands, and, and those people, you know, because those are like, you know, base 150s, and you're slower than them, right? I believe you're like base 144. Uh, I'm not base 141. I mean, you're base 44. Yep. So you're slower than them. You have decent special attack. Your bulk is pretty good. Your special defense is not bad either. So, you know, you could be a special attacking sweeper, and, you know, Regenerator is pretty good. Uh, but other than that, I don't really see too much uses out of Hydrapple right now. I still, I still think it could be pretty good later on, but right now it's still like relatively niche on those Trick Room teams, All right? Um, Galarian Moltres, <clears throat> same thing this time around. Um, I still think it's pretty niche. Could be good later on. I like Galarian Moltres. You know me, it's one of my favorites. Um, you know, Berserk, nasty plot setup, uh, but you'd be hard pressed to find this on a slot right now. Like, tell me what you would take off via. I mean, can you still do stuff with Sinistra in screens? Absolutely. But other than that, eh. Orthrim. So, Orthrim did really, really well recently in the tournament. And again, it's another option that can wall Landers Incarnate. Um, and again, you know, Earth Eater is really, really good, right? If I just put this on the screen real quick. Um, Earth Eater, right? So, and then you just do Iron Defense. Body Press. Then you have Shed Tail, which allows you to pivot and then Heavy Slam to snipe those Fluttermanes, right? So Shed Tail, you're able to go into Dragonite here. And then Dragonite can start setting up Dragon Dances, for example, right? And that's really, really good. And then, you know, again, you'll see this stuff with like Earthquake. And then something like Entei over here with Bulldoze. And then you have Chen Power over here just to make everything hit harder, right? This is like the essence of that that Orthrim team. So it's a nice little niche Landers Incarnate check. So I think it definitely merits a C tier in a niche option. All right, Galarian Zapdos, I think also within the relatively niche option. You know, again, Define is really, really good. Incineroar is back, a lot more Intimidate spam. So, you know, you can pressure Incineroar with your own fighting move. Um, you can pressure Grass types with your flying move. So, you know, but there is still like a couple more better Define options like King Gambit, for example which I think already goes in the A tier and something like that. I think if you really wanted a Defiant Mod, I think King Gambit is literally the king of that right now. Um, 
again, Assault Vest, King Gambit, really good. Swords Dance, um, Black Glasses, King Gambit with Protect, really, really good. Strong against those Tornadus Hyper Offensive teams, because even if they get Speed Control on you, um, if you're just able to set up your, your Swords Dance, you can go for those plus two Sucker Punches. And, you know, with Redirection and Fake Out Support, you can really protect it. And King Gambit can 4-0 those teams a lot, okay? Um, Venusaur, <clears throat> same thing. I still think, you know, outside of Sun teams, you won't really see it. And of course, Protosynthesis, not Protosynthesis, Chlorophyll makes it really good in the Sun. You have Sleep Powder Pressure. Uh, you can build it as a Life Orb set, you know, to deal some damage. You can do a Focus Sash set. All right, but unfortunately, it's not Dynamax era. There's no G-Max Vine Lash. So again, you know, you have to be hard pressed to find this uh, usable over something like Rillaboom, for example. But it's still usable only on those Sun teams. Blastoise, same thing. Blastoise has an interesting toolkit. If I just look at Blastoise for a second. Um, because back in Sword and Shield, you did have some utility with Blastoise. You had Yawn, you had Icy Wind. Um, did you still get helping? You just still get happy. Yeah. Alright, so you have Yawn, Icy Wind. Do you have Shell Smash? Do you have Shell Smash? So Blastoise, again, a relatively niche option here. Um, just in terms of, you know, again, it has good bulk, but special attacks that not so great. So Maybe like a supportive set um, with Yawn and Icy Wind. But outside of that, are you really going to use Blastoise? I mean, oh, it also gets Make Out. Um, maybe if it's your favorite Pokemon, I would imagine. But other than that, do you really need to? I think it's relatively niche. But it could be good on certain teams. But um, as of right now, I, I, I would even almost argue you put this in a D tier. But niche tier for sure right now. Clefairy. Um... I think Clefairy is a really good option. Uh, solid. You know, again, Friend Guard is busted. Friend Guard with a Violite Follow Me is very, very... Actually, you know what? I'm going to put that right here. Um, you know, just being able to redirect attacks, protect your partner, and then potentially heal them with Heal Pulse is very, very good. Incineroar, of course, the S tier of S tiers. Um, Intimidate, Fake Out, Parting Shot. Um, now you get Knock Off to remove key items. I don't need to talk about Incineroar. We already know how good this thing is. Um, this is the reason why Hisuian Arcanine gets knocked down from the S tier all the way down to like the B tier or even arguably the C tier in that exchange, right? Weezing, I don't know how many people are using this thing after the nerf. It could be good uh, on certain teams um, with maybe... Actually, I don't even know. I think I would just don't use it altogether. But, you know, this is not the list uh, that I made. You know, it was at least given. Um, so, yeah. But anyway... Um, Zapdos, again, relatively niche, does get Tailwind still, again, um, but, you know, you're a bulky Tailwind setter, uh, with something like Rocky Helmet, you have Static, so you can potentially Paralyze people, um, Paralyze people is what I meant, you have Hurricane, Accurate in the Rain, so, you know, something like, you know, maybe Tornadus comes, or something like that, but you also get Roost, Something like this with Salamence, right? Salamence can do the same job, but just arguably a little bit better. So, you know, I would just argue, arguably just use Salamence in that sense. So that being said, Salamence, you have the floor here. You're a special attacker. You have Tailwind. You have Draco Meteor. Um, and now you also add the fact that you have Intimidate. You're in the same speed tier as Zapdos. Your typing is better. Dragonflying, right? You, yes, you have four times weakness to ice, but you're able to resist Urshifu, Okay. So you have that going for you. And as a special attack, you don't care about being intimidated too. Not that Blast uh, Zapdos did, but... And then you also have access to Roost. So um, Salamence, definitely still within the B tier option. Uh, Dragonite, A tier. Again, with Chimpow, very, very strong. Um, you know, spam extreme speed with the choice ban. One shot things until the cows come home. Nothing else needs to be said. Politoed, same thing. Niche tier. Um, again... Specific for rain and outside of that doesn't really do much. You have icy wind. You have Paris song. Cool All right, Kendra along with Polito. Once upon a time these two Were at the top of their game in VGC, but this is 2023 No Dynamax. So yeah um, Porygon 2. I still think oh hmm. Do I want to put in a or do I want to put in here? I think right now a minus is appropriate for Porygon 2. You're a bulky Pokemon, right? You have Trick Room, you have Recover, uh, and then, of course, you have Tri-Attack, but more importantly, you also get access to moves like Ice Beam, 
which is great against Landris. Um, you have download where you can get like a special attack boost depending on, you know, if you're able to catch a, a good switch in. Uh, other than that, you also have access to Eerie Impulse, which is good in terms of like neutering some of these special attackers like a Fluttermane, for example. Um, they, they're not going to do any damage. Orca Ludon, uh, Raging Bolt. These are all Pokemon that don't want to be taken out. Eviolite, you know, make the super bulky. But, you know, themes that really want to utilize Porygon, right now, write this. Incineroar, um, P2, and then you can even argue stuff like either Araquanid, which is really good. Or you can argue stuff with like Primarina, and then slap on a grass type like Amoongus, okay? And just go like uh, a good Trick Room team um, in this sense, right? I would just do like a core like this, either water type. And just go from there. But Porygon, very, very good um, in terms of like being a bulky Trick Room setter that can exert some offensive pressure, right? And then you have Longevity with Recover. Now, they did nerf Recover a little bit like we said in our other team list video. But other than that, I still think P2 is a very, very good option uh, in Regulation F. Smeargle? Man. I don't know. No Dark Void. You get Smash by Ursh. I'm going to say Niche. Hit him on top. Same thing, you have Intimidate, you have Fake Out, just like Incineroar. You do have Close Combat, you do have Wide Guard. Um, so you do have some things that Incineroar can't quite do, but at the end of the day, Incineroar is just better at being an Intimidate spammer and a weakener uh, than him on top itself. Entei, one of the meta definers, definitely going in the A tier. You know, Inner Focus, you can't be Intimidated, can't be Fake Out. Sacred Fire is busted, 50% chance to burn. Um, now you're seeing Entei on those Dragonite teams with, uh, you know, with Chen Pao, you know, just dealing a ton of damage and even Urshifu, right? So here's your typical priority list. Like, look at this. You have Entei, you have Dragonite, um, you have Chen Pao, and then you have Urshifu. Like, this is so simple in terms of how you want to build this, right? You already knew what these three could do. Now you slap on this. Right? And now, all of a sudden, where is your fake out? You don't, you don't even need it. Um, it just does a ton of damage here. And I think it's really, really good. It also gets, like, Assault Vest. <coughs> you can spam Snarl. Um, and, of course, like we said, Sacred Fire. You have the option of doing Extreme Speed. And then you have Stomping Tantrum, which is, I think, a must. That's Stomp. Okay? So... You can neuter special attackers, which is something that, you know, some of these guys struggle against, especially like Fluttermane, for example, or even like Goldango. And then now you have something for a Goldango and something for Fluttermane because they struggled against it. But now with Snarl and or Sacred Fire, you can really put a, a dent on some of their plans. All right, good. Suicune, again. You know what? This is better than Nisha. I think it's going to be solid. It needs support. You do get good moves from Suicune. Again, you get stuff like Tailwind. You get stuff like Icy Wind. You get Snarl. Or Snarl. Again, very good. You get Scald. Yep, you get Scald too. So you have the chance to burn. This is like almost a special variant, but worse, you know, from Entei in a way. Right? Just because you have a lot of cool tools. You're very bulky. 100 HP, 115, and 115 Spit Death. Just need to EV this to survive Rillaboom, Grassy Glide. You know, and you definitely can. For sure. Um, we have that spread before back in Sword and Shield. So just make it super bulky with something like a Citrus Berry, for example. And, you know, Suicune can really, really benefit your team by just sitting there and spamming Scalds and Snarls and Icy Winds, for example. I like it a lot. I think it's really good with stuff like Landris Incarnate um, or even stuff like Volcarona. But, you know, I overall, I you just have to be hard-pressed to find a water slot that isn't Urshifu or that isn't Ogre Pond Wellspring. But it's still pretty solid. You just need a little bit more support. Tyranitar. All right. Sand Center. Again, relatively niche. You know, actually, you know, this one's a tough one. We'll do it. Can I put T-Tar a little bit higher than where I'm putting it now? You know, Sand can change weather just like Ninetales. Um, mm, I'm going to say right here b tier just because it's a little bit better than extra drill in terms of like functioning outside of sand you get like tyrant are still used outside of sand a little bit right knock off assault vest you know rock slide stab is still pretty good uh getting a special defense boost like we said is also relatively nice i think tyrant just needs a lot of support the seven weaknesses are not great 
Um, Urshifu kind of ended him a little bit. Yes, there is terrestrialization. I understand that. But, you know, outside of a few teams at some regionals, um, you know, once Urshifu came back into the format, Tyranitar wasn't really played um, for a good reason. And, you know, the weakness to Fluttermane doesn't really help either. But still, with the right support, I think with its stats, Tyranitar can do very, very well. Pelipper, um, again, I do like it. It's a great archetype with rain. You could pretty much just do like Pelipper, Arcalude on rain teams. And they're very easy to build, right? This is all you do. So you have Pelipper. You have Urshifu, of course. Then you have Arcaludon. Then you have something like an Amoongus. Then you have Landers Incarnate. Okay. Right? Which does sand your storm in the rain. Okay. And then you can add something like Incineroar. Right? As your fire type pivot. Then you can position in and out. Here it is. Congratulations. We have now made a Pelipper Arcaludon team. You know, again, Fire Water, Grass Core with Insin, Amoongus, Urshifu, and another strong special attacker with Landers. Done! <laughs> right? If you really want me to build this, um, again, you can just message me. Uh, or I'll even do it for like a cheap tier one sub, you know, two bucks. And I'll give you like a full EV spread of this. But Pelipper, again, Tailwind. You did get access to Wide Guard. You get Hurricane. Right? You can do Protect. You can do Hydro Pump. Again, just changing the weather um, in this format is going to be very very valuable so i do put it here in the solid tier dust clops i think again it's still strong and consistent i want to say a tier yes there's Fluttermane. you have an violet user i'm gonna say hey i still think dust clops is a good mod again um you have access to haze you have access to trick room paint split is really good will o -Wisp, chance to burn um, really good with those Ursaluna teams. In fact, let me just throw them in there. Where's that? Ursaluna Blood Moon and the regular Ursaluna. I think uh, a lot of these Trick Room Setters, you know, do use, uh, I'm sorry, Trick Room Sweepers do use Dust Clops a lot. Blood Moon Ursaluna, strong special damage. Physical Ursaluna, strong physical damage. Guts Burn, um, really, really strong options in Trick Room, of course. Um, they're always going to be good. They have good stats too. So without a doubt, definitely in the A tier. Torkoal. Also, very, very good A- minus tier. Could actually, now, probably a little bit more valuable just because of Protosynthesis, you know, with Raging Bolt and or Fluttermane. I'm going to say it's good for what it needs to do. Um, you know, again, giving and changing the weather um, so that way your Fluttermane and or um, Raging Bolt could, you know, dominate and do the job that they need to do, right? Milotic, <clears throat> this time a little bit niche. Um, again, does punish intimidate like from Incineroar, uh, can put on pressure with, you know, your water moves. You do get, um, some coil hypnosis set ideas. I still think it's relatively niche. Actually, I don't think it's, I think still solid, but just needs support. Again, you'd have to be hard pressed to find a slot for this over something like Urshifu or Water Ogre Pond. I think they're just a little bit better, but if you wanted an, a water option with, you know, an anti-intimidate, then my Lodic is your player, right? It's it's just a little bit above the niche here, but I think a, a B tier is correct uh, with something like my Lodic. All right, Metagross. It's a good Pokemon, man. I think I think A tier is correct. All right, I almost put in A minus, and I think you can definitely flow between like A minus and the A tier. Um, Bullet Punch is the main selling point, along with the Assault Vest. Uh, you know, again, just being able to snipe Fluttermanes immediately uh, for super effective damage as opposed to something like Sucker Punch. I think this time around, again, Assault Vest is correct for Metagross. So you could do something like Bullet Punch. You could do Psychic Fangs, you know, for your stab damage, Stomping Tantrum. And whatever it is you 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 can use here. You know, some other um, Heavy Slam, right? Something like this, right? And then you could just do Adam in Nature. You could do the benchmark here, or you can just simply snipe, um, and then just go for something like this 112. So you know, bypass base 100s after a plus minus one, and then you could do something like this, right, where you can just say, get a little bit of bulk in there, but you know, mainly optimize your attack a little bit. Or you could do something like this, and just stop, jump the rest here into HP. Something like this is relatively standard, okay. Um, but other than that, you put pressure on Flutter Main. Uh, you're able to be played with Chen Pao to do a little bit more damage along with Dragonite. Okay, and now you have a Dragon uh, Steel Core and then you have Fluttermane here. Then you can snap on something like Tornadus, for example. And then maybe even something like Entei, right? 
Tell me what's wrong with this. Or even something like Urshifu, for that matter. Torn Urshi is just broken. So you could just do something like this with like some very hyper-offensive stuff. But, you know, all in all, this set uh, has been good. It's got good results in the tournament so far. So I think it's very, very nice. Latias, um, definitely going in the A tier. Really, really strong right now. Again, another good Tailwind setter. Just like Salamence, right? A special variant of a uh, special dragon that can set Tailwind. Difference here is that Latias is much faster than Salamence. And you have Levitate. So... Now, Landers Incarnate cannot hit you with that Earth Power, like we said. And you have Mist Ball for stuff like Iron Hands, stuff like Amoongus. And now you also get access to Ice Beam where you can go first before the Landers and then just KO them with the Ice Beam or force them into a Terrestrialization that they don't want to be doing. And then, of course, Recover and Tailwind, you know, just extended longevity with something like a Rocky Helmet um, just to deal good chip damage against, you know, physical Pokemon. Um, Terra Poison is also really good. Uh, just, you know, as a good defensive Terra against fairy type damage, all right? But so far, yeah, we got some good A tier options. Good mix so far. Good mix so far. All right, next is Reggie Lucky. So, um, again, Reggie Lucky had that nice brief little run towards the end of Regulation E. Now, you know, I still think it could be a pretty solid niche option. Again, on those Tailwind teams with NDD Fluttermane, I still think it has a pretty decent role. And now... Um, you know, with the, whatchamacallit. Well, thing is, you, you have Raging Bull, you have Iron Hands, okay? You know, those are your two dominant electric type Pokemon. Do you really need Regilecki for that matter? Now, that being said, you can still get the speed control back in your favor, you know, with using Electrowebs, of course. Um, Terra Blast, Terra Ice gives you something into Landorus. Uh, so that's something to consider. But, you know, again, very, very niche. Latio, same thing. You know, tell me what you want Latias for that you can't get with Latias. I understand you're a stronger special attacker and you have Luster Purge, but the bulk on Latias is just much more appreciated. And, you know, it's it's doing much better than it is its counterpart. So, again, relatively niche. You still can play it. It'll still be okay. Um, it's got a much higher special attack stat. But other than that, just use Latias. Gyarados? Um... I still think can be right here in the B tier, you know, in all things considered. Um, that being said, you know, the fact that there's Raging Bolt, again, another electric type that Gyarados doesn't want to deal with, but um, Landers Incarnate can't hit you. You know, you are flying type and the poison damage gets resisted. Um, so you have that going for you. And then you still have stuff like Waterfall, Icy Wind, you have Taunt, Helping Hand. Gyarados could be relatively niche in terms of like a good solid team that you want to use it on. But again, can you can you verify this not verify can you justify this over some of the other water types that we mentioned earlier right so you know i almost want to put in the c tier I, you know what i'm gonna keep it here for now and i may put it down later um we'll just have to wait and see you know just when i look at the list as a whole cash on again also very very niche you know it's good against urshifu but other than that what else do you really need it for i understand you get ice beam coverage against landers you get yawn pressure so it can do something um, Porygon Z, same thing, adaptability, life orb, great, special attack, nuker, um, you know, good with Whimsicott, fake tier support, I guess, but other than that, what else are you really using it for? Just use Porygon 2. Mousehold, redirection support, friend guard, just like a fairy, um, again, I still think it's relatively solid, and now you get beat up again, um, into stuff like, um, you know, Terrakian for that matter. Whimsicott can definitely do that as well. But, you know, with Annihilate also being really, really good. I still think these two are pretty good um, as opposed to right now. I think they can do a lot of damage. Especially, you know, now the fact that there's Incineroar now. Um, yeah, I think Terra Fire is correct on something like Annihilate. But other than that, you know, I still think it's a... You, like, Mouse Ape is never going to go away. Like, I'm just very, very much convinced that that... Mouse Ape is just never going away. They're going to find ways to adapt um, within the meta. It took a bit of a backseat in Regulation E. I think it comes to the forefront a little bit more in Regulation F. So we'll see how it does. Right now, I'm going to give them... You know what? I stand corrected. Let me see. Um, Not that I stand corrected. Do I want to bump them down in another tier? I think I do. It's tough to say. I do think... You know what? I'm going to say right here. I think they're both right here. I think B tier is correct. I don't think we can say like 
A tier or even like A minus. I think right here is definitely correct. Chump Pluff, <clears throat> same thing. I still think, you know, pretty good mod. Very niche. Good on some of those sun teams. Um, with Chlorophyll, Tailwind. Um, so you could definitely do something with Jump Bluff for sure. Heatran. I think, you know, right here within that A minus tier is correct with something like Heatran. Um, it's always going to be a good Pokemon, you know, with those resistances. I understand the four times weakness to Landris isn't all that great. But other than that, you know, strong special attacker in the sun, uh, which is really good. You can pressure Fluttermanes a little bit with Flash Cannon, of course. Um, Terra Blast, Terra Grass is another thing that you can consider. I do think Heatran is a solid Pokemon to use right now. So definitely within the A-, minus, very good tier. Um, Cresselia. Um, I think also right here or even mm, either somewhere again in the A tier or also in the A very good. I think I'm going to put in A tier. I think, I think it merits that slot. So, you know, bulky Trick Room Center, just like Dusclops, you get Lunar Blessing to be able to heal, um, you know, status conditions and stuff like that. Uh, Landris Incarnate also still has a hard time hitting you. You have Levitate, Poison Damage, not really doing a whole lot. Um, so... I think uh, that that slot is correct. Superior, again, very niche. Has some tournament results already, which is quite interesting. Um, but Contrary is a good ability with something like Leaf Storm. Uh, I, you know, I, I guess it does get Glare. But other than that, still very, very niche. Whimsicott, right here. Strong, consistent. Tailwind, Fake Tears, Sunny Day, Moonblast. Lots of moves you can use. I think those are the standard sets. You outspeed Tornadus, which is important. So you can have the faster Tailwind. So that's already pretty good. Um, you can see this on Protosynthesis teams with Sunny Day. Uh, and go figure from there. All right, Scrafty. Intimidate, Fake Out, sure. Other than that, nothing else really needs to be said. Just use Incineroar. Gothitelle. <coughs> also Gothitelle, also pretty good here with Fake Out. You know, Trick Room, of course. Um, to be able to trap things in and combo well with Urshifu. Uh, is going to be good, uh, especially on a lot of different teams. You know, again, they can't switch out um, and they can't really protect. They can if they want, but they're not going to be doing so well. So I think uh, these two are also going to be like relatively good. So I think C tier is correct, um, almost even in the B tier, in my opinion. But I think uh, as a niche option, for sure, could be good. I almost want to put it up into B. I may just put it up into B here, but we'll see. Gallade also relatively niche with uh those torkoal and you know or those ndd size spam teams you know with ndd hatterene uh having a dark fighting type is really good um you know for good coverage on that kind of team so yeah volcarona right here in the a tier without a doubt volcarona has strong tournament results again in regulation f it won twice already two big tours right and i'll tell you why look at this heatran has gone down in usage which is the one thing that kind of walled it right but now all of a sudden he trans out of the picture now you wall a lot of the special attackers so look you have something like heat heat wave for example giga drain and quiver dance okay and then protect then you have flame body then you can even have rocky helmet or you can even have something like citrus berry not citrus berry or even leftovers for example right and then terra water for the urshifu no i'm sorry terra dragon that's a way better option uh that's electric Right here. So look, you can boost up your spadef, you can boost up your special attack, and even your speed. So now all of a sudden, the flood of is gonna have a hard time against you. You get to wall it, you know, and then you're not taking damage. Then you just add the fact that you can put Intimidate on this thing. Um, uh, on a team like this, you can add something like Landris here. Um, you can set it up with Ogre Pond, the Wellspring. And then now all of a sudden, the flood of main looking very, very strong uh, in terms of walling a lot of these special attackers. And then, you know, Giga Drain's really good. Just clicking that against something like an Ogre Pond or another Urshifu to really put pressure on them and deal significant damage. And then the physical attackers, they risk getting burned if they have, you know, physical contact moves. So, you know, there's the all the more reason there. I think Volcarona is really, really good right now. Terrakian, believe it or not, I think it's right here in the A- minus very good tier. Again, strong Rock Slide user with Whimsicott um it has some good results already good speed tier um strong attack stat uh, again like you could just do rock slide 
You could do Sacred Sword, all right, and so forth. But I, I the fact that you can pressure uh, a ton of Pokemon with this, along with this strong speed to your stat, is really, really good. Again, just watch out for Fluttermane, of course. But I think A minus is correct right now with Terrakia. I think it's a really, really solid mon. I, 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 I'm not joking about that. I think it's really good. All right, this thing, <clears throat> Thunder Hysterion. Okay, I want to say right here in the niche tier again. The the thing is, it has a good result. Okay, and here's the secret. This is why um it might pick up in some usage a little bit more. Um, but Thunder Hysterion has Prankster Electric Terrain and. This is the thing, uh, not the, where's the, not Prankster, I'm sorry. No, it does. Uh, the other Thunderous. Right here, Prankster. Yeah, and then Electric Terrain. There we go. Um, so that's going to enable a lot of the Cork Drive Pokemon. So, you know, that's going to allow them to do a ton more damage, of course. But it's just interesting. And, you know, that's good against Amoongus in general. They can't, you can't really sleep uh, in Electric Terrain. I put this one. <clears throat> but I really meant the other one uh, right here. So let me just take this one away. We won't even rank that one. Landris Incarnate. Man, right here. Right in the S tier. How the mighty have risen. There was once upon a time when Landris came out. Wasn't even used. Now, it's at the top. You'll see a lot of teams use Landris. And again, it just runs through Incineroar. Strong, Earth Power, KOs it. Okay? And then you have Sludge Bomb for the Grass types. Something like Whimsicott, Rillaboom, uh, the Ogre Ponds. They don't want to be taking Sludge Bomb. Then you have Substitute to stall out Trick Room turns. Then you have Sandseer Storm um, in the rain to deal basically special Precipice Blades. Then you have something like Psychic to snipe Amoongus's and the other Terra Poisons. Um, especially the Levitate Pokemon, right? So you have that going for you. Landris, great option. Sylveon, relatively niche. It, it hits hard, but it's slow, it's bulky, could be good in Trick Room, that's it. Pre-Marina. So, with Pre-Marina, I think we go right here. B tier, solid, needs support. And the reason being, again, um, Water Fairy is a great typing, okay? Um, we didn't get Tapu Fini, but we got Pre-Marina. And, you know, great special defense, so Fluttermane's going to have some difficulty KOing this. But overall... You know, you can just do a lot with, with, with something like this. You know, especially if you have like leftovers of combine set in that in that essence, where you can just go for something like this, for example, and then just do like hyper voice, moon blast. You can do a uh, calm mind and then protect, right? And then just do like leftovers, liquid voice. So I uh, that's hyper beam, hyper voice, right? Like again. Just putting pressure against Urshifu is really good. Putting pressure against Incineroar is really, really good. And then just walling out some of these other special attackers running around. You just have to watch out for a Rillaboom clicking Grassy Glide, of course. Um, but if you can just slap this onto a team with like Incineroar and then Porygon 2, for example, um, I think this is a really, really good uh, starting core uh, with Pre Marina, without a doubt. <clears throat> Same thing, Araquanid. We just talked about it earlier. Water Bubble with Liquidation, really, really good. You know, again, just my advice to you, you know, and nothing else really needs to be said about Arachnid. Again, you outspeed the, the Ursalunas in the Trick Room, okay? That's first thing. And then um, you can't be burned, which is great. Fire type attacks, half against it. Just do some damage calcs with Mystic Water and then Water Bubble and then stuff like Liquidation. If this thing got Wave Crash, it, it's over. And then, you know, Leech Life for Longevity Recovery. Then you get access to white guard for example and then just simply protect something like this <clears throat> could be really really good um again this is the other set that i would consider um and it's had some good tournament results already i think b tier is definitely correct comfy again trick room setter triage floral healing is a very very good thing this is not dynamax unfortunately where comfy had really really nice uses there but this time around, I think, you know, you'd have to have some justification to use this over something like Dusk Ops, you know, uh, Cresselia, for example, or even like the Bronzong now, for, for example. Okay. Um, and then we'll go into Kamo. So Kamo, I think, again, is another good solid option. You know, the Iron Defense Body Press is still something to behold with. Um, Clanging Scales could be a definitely uh, a good thing to have. But Kamo definitely for sure, uh, you know, just... You know, if we just take a look at the successful set so far, <coughs> you know, with um, 
soundproof here no bulletproof right and then look at the look at these stats like iron defense body press is just gonna hurt do so much damage okay um and then you're a fighting type against incineroar and you know intimidate doesn't matter so combo's looking really good against incin uh in that sense so i think right now it's just also within the b tier all right next up is rillaboom come on man of course it's going in the s tier fake out grassy glides is broken you know u-turn wood hammer strong grass type attacks in the again just a great pokemon Insin, rillaboom and urshifu here is your dominant fire water grass core of course they're going to be in the s tier right i don't even need to explain anything else about rillaboom um double fake out you know within Sinor, you have the u-turn pivot okay so and then you have the ability to remove indeed psychic terrain which is one way to really deal with size spam you take away that terrain and you take away an important weapon and one way to do that is by using your rillaboom to that advantage for you okay um and then you also have grassy glide again into urshifu for that matter so that's also another merit to it hatterene um also I also want to just put it here. I think it's still like pretty good. You know, NDD Trick Room Size Spam stuff is pretty, pretty solid. Now, the whole, the whole hype is with Iron Crown right now, but Hatterene is still like a very, very good option. I think it's better than some of these B tier options for sure. You know, you still get a good solid fairy type into some of these dark types. So, for that matter, I still think it's um, a really, really solid option, you know, in terms of what we wanted to do. So, good job, Hatterene. Alchemy? I mean. Like, Decorate is really, really cool. Like, it has some results. Like, I can see this, you know, being used with stuff like Metagross. Um, nah, let's just put it in the C tier. Like, Decorate is a good move. Sweet Veil stops you from being slept on. I think it's a good support option in some cases, but, you know, very, very niche at best. The Indeedies, <clears throat> we'll just do this for the, you know, the female Indeedy. All right, I don't know why there's the male one there. But, um, again... A tier, solid redirector, sci you know, psychic terrain, um, denying priority fake out is very, very important. Um, it's spammable with Iron Crown these days, right? Because of the expanding force. Um, you know, speaking of expanding force, Hattering got it back, which is also another reason why we can put this in the very, very good tier. So it got a nice little buff there. Um, but bulky redirector, you can go Terra Water, you can put a Rocky Helmet on it to, you know, really hamper the Urshifus and whatnot. Um, it also gets access to Trick Room. So good solid option there. Dragapult, also very, very good. Dragon goes. You're the faster dragon. And if you're the faster dragon, you're gonna win a lot of games. Okay. Nothing else needs to be said about Dragon Pult with Chen Pao. Okay. Urshifu Dark. Definitely in the A tier. I think Urshifu Dark um again will rise in usage, in my opinion. You just have so much pressure against Psy Spam. Okay. You can watch out a lot of things at neutral anyway. So that there's that, and then of course, uh, Bandit Urshifu with Chen Pao is just doing way, way too much damage. Okay, I do think it's a good option that people need to be considering more. Um, I like it a lot. Reggie Drago, another one. I think it's also very, very good. Um, Tailwind Dragon Energy with Goldango. Speaking of Goldango, let's just throw him right there as well. Goldango, nasty plot. Make it rain with Reggie Drago Dragon Energy. Ton of damage. Um, also with Amoongus, um, also a very, very good combination just to be able to set it up and just, you know, pressure with ma Nasty Plat Maker Mains. You, you, you do good damage against the Flutter Mains. You can um, put pressure against leads like Tornadus and even Whimsicott. Just O-Kill them straight. Um, you know, again, Shadow Ball against Dusclops. You know, Gold Angle is a really, really good Pokemon. Um, Armor Rouge, man. No one's really touching this anymore now that Hattery got Expanding Force and not that there's Iron Crown. So I guess there is some niche for it. But other than that, like, are people like still like using this uh, outside of, you know, Iron Crown or whatnot? I guess it's still in the B2. It's still solid, right? You can still definitely use it. It's still good. It didn't lose anything. It's just other things are, are better now. Um, Registeel. I think Registeel is going in the A minus tier. I like this thing a lot. It's very bulky. You can EV this to live, Landers, um, Earth Power. And then when it gets to plus six, nothing is stopping those body presses. It, it does so much. And it's hard to break. And you know, you can't uh and, and you know, just in trick room also, it can just do a ton. And there's not a whole lot there that you can really do to stop it. You can taunt it, I guess. 
But Bronzong also, again, within that same category. Bramble Gas. <clears throat> this time around, I think it's still good. I think you'll see a little bit more later on, you know, on those Tailwind Tornadoes teams. Um, along with Heatran and stuff like that. But <clears throat> time will tell. All right. Glamora. I still think Glamora, again, um, I guess B tier, right? You know, again, you'll see that mostly on Don Dozo teams, which, by the way, Don Dozo is now back at winning regulation F tournaments. I, it just had three top cut results yesterday. Not just top cut, but like first place, second place, third place. What the heck? I thought people moved past Don Dozo. They did not. It's still dominant. It's still strong right here in the A tier. Um, you you got to respect it. I think, you know, we always say, when is the power creep going to catch up to Don Dozo? I mean, you know, at the online play, it's still doing its job. At the regional play, you'll still see like top cut results. So you still need to respect it. It's still very, very good. Um, I thought we ranked Annihilate already. Oh yeah, I guess this is a second copy. So uh, some of these, you know, are just copies that I guess I made by accident. All right, Furgraph, I think, again, also very, very good in the A- minus tier. Uh, you know, again, just denying priority, setting up Trick Room, helping hand, does a lot uh, for what you needed to do. It's great support on those Tailwind teams to deny uh, other priority moves and Trick Room altogether. So I think Furgraph has a great role. I don't know why this is here, um, but I would put this in the don't use tier, but, you know, I don't have the D tier, so I guess we'll just leave it there. Um, Flutter Main, of course, S tier. You know, strong special fairy attack. 70% usage, man. You can't argue against that. It, it's going to be staying up there. It's one of the premier Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet competitively in VGC. I'm not I'm not talking about Fluttermane anymore. We already know what this thing can do. Iron Bundle. Um, still a good Pokemon. Again, booster energy, icy wind. Gets you control in that Tailwind Mirror. Um, and again, you can pressure some of the dragons with Freeze Dry. So, all the more reason to use it. Iron Hands, also still very, very good. Strong, solid, consistent option. Not, <clears throat> not quite the S tier that we once had it, but, you know, didn't lose anything. Fake Out, Bulky Assault Vest user, um, Heavy Slam to Snipe, Flood of Mains, Drain Punch, still very, very good. Back Scalloper, I think also in the B tier, still very good, especially when you have Ninetales on your team. I think these two go together. Right, you can snipe some of these dragons now that are running around. Um, all the more reason to do it. Clear amulet works on back scalloper, but again, also something against Landris. Chen Pao, S tier, making your physical mods like these guys do a whole ton of damage. Oh, look, this this six looks like a legit team. <laughs> oh man, Stellar Chen Pao is on the rise. People are not using Ghost anymore, it's all about Stellar Dark Sucker Punch. To KO these Flutter mains, especially if they're bulky. Stellar does the job. Use it. All right. Uh, Chiyu, I also want to put that right here. Strong, solid, consistency. We already know what Chiyu does with Flutter main, But now you add it into the Psy Spam teams. You know, with Iron Crown. So this is what the typical Iron Crown team looks like. In DD. All right. Then you have Iron Crown. Uh, then you have Chiyu, of course, to do more damage. Then you have Tornadus. Double Genie idea with Tornadus and Landris. Um, and then you slap on simply an Urshifu, right? This is the, the team that we built as our rental. Again, <clears throat> just helping Iron Crown do a ton of damage as well as your Landris and even your Tornadus to an extent. Um, Chiyu, Fluttermane uh, teams are also really, really strong. We already know what this thing does at this format. Rory Moon, um, I still think, you know, again, it's dropped. Of course, people are using other options for Tailwind and Breaking Swipe these days, but um, can still get the job done. I think B tier is correct right now, dropping it down a little bit. Um, you have to do a little bit more to make it work, but I still think Rory Moon is a good option. This should have been in the D tier. I don't know why we've had this here. All right, Walking Weight. Listen, <clears throat> on paper, in the beginning, Everybody was raving about this thing. Then you look at the tournaments. The results haven't been, you know, as what we expected. Not that they've been, like, terrible, but they've been a little bit subpar. That's because Walking Wake is just primarily a nuker. You know, it doesn't really add so much to the table. Yes, 
Hydro Steam is really good in the sun, of course. But other than that, it's not, it doesn't really add too much, you know, in terms of what we wanted to do. But that being said, Pengi's got a really good team with it right now. He's been, you know, doing these like Torkoal Fluttermane teams along with Raging Bolt, you know, Double Dragon with, with uh, Jump Pluff. So, you know, he's been rocking with it. I think that's the way to go with it. I do think Walking Wake needs something else with it. It can't be the Lone Sweeper. I think it needs to be like the one, the one B. Like something else has to be one A, and then Walking Wake can be the one B dominant sweeper on the team. So I think it needs a little bit of help. But other than that, still, still a pretty good option. Okie dokie. Um, I think also in the B tier again, Guard Dog against Incineroar and some of these other Intimidate users is going to be good. Um, Ogre Pond, <clears throat> is this the grass one? I think it's relatively niche, but um, the the water one, the water one is definitely S tier without a doubt. Okay, the special defense boost when you terrestrialize it, um, you get again, um, you know, it's really good against Fluttermane in terms of like soaking up that damage. Same thing with like Raging Bolt and Archaludon. You can redirect a lot of things like uh, you know the Wungus Rillaboom stuff. You're a grass type. You're not going to be affected so much there. Um, Ivy Cudgel, great against, you know, the fire types and Landorus, for example. Um, Horn Leech for Urshifu. And its main use is against Urshifu, right? That's what you really want it for. Protect your Landorus and your own fire type um, against the Urshifu stuff. So I think, you know, without a doubt, it's definitely S tier. Arcaludon, I like a lot. I'm going to say I like a lot. I like it on some of these rain teams. Am I really to say it's A tier? <laughs> I think it's very good. I think A minus is correct. Um, Assault Vest Electro Shot. Okay, like this is the set. Uh, let me just take away some of the stuff besides Tornadoes. I think right now this is what you want with Archimedon. Where are you? Um, Assault Vest. Then you have Electro Shot. Then you have uh, Draco. Then you have Flash Cannon. And then uh, Body Press, right? Because again, you're going to be taking damage. So over time, the stamina is going to rock up, and then eventually these body presses are going to be hitting a little bit harder than some of these other attacks. Electro Shot in the rain, you get to raise your special attack, right? Which is great. Means harder hitting Draco Meteors. And even if you take the reduction, um, you can still go for Electro Shots later on just to, like, again, get your boost back up. But Assault Fest is correct. Look at that special attack stat and that defense stat. Really good option. Iron Leaves... I want to put this in the D tier. I don't think it belongs, but maybe there's some niche that someone can explore and use it. But other than that, who's using this? Um, Sinistra. Let's see. I still think it's very good. Like Sinistra, you know, Trick Room, Rage Powder, Healing, um, you know, with his Hospitality. I think it's really, I think it's still solid. Again, Strength Sap also to neuter some of these physical attackers. Um, so for that, I think very good is really... All right, <clears throat> one of my favorites right now, Iron Crown. I think, you know, Psy Spam got a real boon when Iron Crown became legal. Expanding force with booster energy is a ton of damage, right? A lot of people have been liking it. I've been liking it. Like, look at this. Booster energy modest with 122 special stat. The bulk is good, okay? Then you have Terra Water, you know, for, you know, the, the fire types, you know, something like Entei. And then Tachyon Cutter, believe it or not, can one-shot Urshifu Dark if you're Modest Nature. And even if it has a little bit of bulk, it's a very, very good roll against it. But that's your weapon against it. Um, so I do like it a lot with Indeedy, of course. We showed you the team. Raging Bolts, man. This is the one that, you know, is again <clears throat> one of those meta-defining new Pokemon. Thunderclap Calm Mind is busted. Okay, I just want to say that right now. Thunderclap... Um, Calm Mind is a great set and now all of a sudden Safety Goggles becomes a great item on it because one way to really get around the Thunderclap was just to redirect it, you know, but now, you know, you don't care with Rage Powder. Um, you can ignore that with um, Safety Goggles and then still have Dragon Pulse um, and then you can do Calm Mind and then Protect. Um, this special attack stat is very, very strong. If you can get even like one or two Calm Minds, this Raging Bolt is going to sweep a lot of different teams. Protosynthesis. Making it really good in the sun. So stuff like Sunny Day Tornadoes, 
um, is what you really want to be using with it. Um, you can even consider, like I said, the Torkoal. Um, but either way, you're slapping on Fluttermane, you know, with something like this. And just going for there. Um, great, S tier option. Amoongus! <clears throat> you know what? Amoongus? I want to put it A. I think it belongs in S. I think it's like low S tier. Actually, can I really say that with Ogre Pond? No, I'm going to say like really high A tier. Like it's back on the rise again, um, which is good. Um, you know, I, I did like Amoongus a little bit more than Ogre Pond. Rage Powder, Sport, Clear Smog for Gondozo. You know, gives you something to play in Trick Room. We already know what Amoongus does. Tornadus, um, this is the guy that enables everything with Rain Dance and Sunny Day. Prankster Tailwind. Without a doubt, the S tier Landris also. If you need a, uh, an Intimidate option and you already have a Fire type option covered by either Chi or Entei and you don't want to use Incineroar, use Landris. All right. The Rock Ogre Pond, again, a little bit more niche. Um, Raging Fire, Gouging Fire, I should say. You know, <clears throat> again, pretty solid. I, I We used it yesterday on the channel, you know, with Will's team. I like Tao. I also like Breaking Swipe. I think Volcarona is just a better Pokemon in terms of, you know, Flame Body with um, that as opposed to like the Raging Bulwark, which you can still status against Gouging Fire. And, you know, the Urshifu Surging Strike still goes through. It's not even susceptible to the burn. So that's not so great. So let's put it in the B tier. Iron Boulder. I mean, it's not there yet. I want to say it's still solid. It just needs to be explored a little bit more. The Heart Flame Ogre Pond is also still pretty good. It has dropped, you know, originally, but, you know, Ivy Cudgel is still really good. Um, you know, Wood Hammer also still very, very good. Uh, it's still going to be good on some of these hyper aggressive teams. Magmar and Electabuzz. There's two Magmars because I forgot I made an extra copy. <clears throat> but, do you really need to use these? But they do have some results. Again, the whole idea is that they both have a Violet and they both have Follow Me. This one has flame body, this one has static. So, you know, eh, I guess you can make it work if you really cared for it. Um, is that it? Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and let's review this list one more time and let's see if we want to rise or drop anything over here. Yeah, so like S tier, I think is already pretty good. Like Insin, Rilla, Urish, of course, with Chin Pal, Fluttermane. That's already good there. Tornadus, Raging Bull. Yeah, S tier is pretty good. A tier with Amoongus, Chiyu, Iron Hands, the other Urshifu, Volcarona, and then the two Ursula. Yeah, this, is, this is pretty good. Um, you can make the argument some of these could go up there. Um, Dandozo, you can make the argument could go up into the upper A tier. But I think placing it here right now is still okay. B tier, Walking Wake stuff. Um, you know, Primarina, Araquanid. Yeah, I think B tier is correct as well. Um, can win some tournaments. They just need a lot of support. They need Trick Room, right? Some of these guys. Um, Suicune again, um, again, water option with Skull, Tailwind, again, still very solid, I like Suicune, uh, and then the niche tier, yeah, I think this is correct, again, <clears throat> um, if you don't see your Pokemon that you're looking for here, that means it hasn't quite made the impact in Regulation F as of this moment, alright, there's just too many options, okay, but these are the best of the best if you want to, you know, pick up competitive play right now in Regulation F, in my opinion. Okay, feel free to comment and ask or, you know, debate which ones that we missed that should be mentioned or discussed, right? And we'll reply, okay? Because this is where the fighting begins with some of you viewers, right? Because you'll say, oh, this thing should be A tier. Oh, no, this is S tier. No, I think it should be niche. You guys have some crazy explanations, but... Um, I just want it to be, you know, as concise and a little bit short as much as possible. Because, again, you have a lot of options to consider. But I think this is what we're doing with uh, in terms of how we want Regulation F to, to look like right now. All right. We'll be back with another video in the next one, guys. Peace out and have a good one.